see how this one's cooked. And again, perfect. Nice, nice marbling in there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. In this video, we are going to age a seasoned 20 pound ribeye for 35 days. I take you through the entire process uh, from opening it right out of the bag to uh, seasoning, sealing, aging. I give you uh, a view of what it looks like several times throughout the 35 days. And then um, we're gonna cook it. And I'll tell you what uh, I think it tastes like. Uh, so in the beginning of the video, I put a, a little uh, a couple clips of what to expect. And if you last as long as the intro, well, please keep watching because I take you through every step of the process. This sucker is almost 20 pounds. That is what day one looks like. It's starting to uh, take on a deeper red color. Here's day mm, seven, I think. Here we are about day 20, looking delicious. And fast forward, to day 35, meat day is here. Oh my God. It's like a waxy deliciousness. Delicious. So one down, a little bit too thick. All right, one steak I am going to season. The other I am not going to season. That's a little bit more on the back side. Beautiful ribeye. This sucker is almost 20 pounds, and uh, we're going to do it a little different this time. We're going to season it. Uh, you'll need a rack to put it on. You'll need these uh, Umai bags. This is actually the 12 to 18 pound bag, 12 inches by 24. It's probably the wrong bag. It's probably going to be a little tight. Uh, I should have got the 16 by 28 bag, uh, but I didn't. So I'm just going to have to make this work. Uh, fortunately, there's three bags in here, so I generally screw up the first one. I'm going to season this first this time. This is a Montreal seasoning from a website called Spice Jungle. It's my favorite. I'll put the link down below. Uh, I'm going to season this steak first. I've never done that before. I've heard good things about it. And then you need a food saver vacuum pack. So let's start by uh, cutting it open. It's going to bleed all over the place. The, the drier it is, the less blood is going to get sucked up into the uh, vacuum sealer. Okay, so next up I'm going to season it. Leave some of the flavor behind. Uh, the salt helps uh, dry it out just a little bit faster. Um, I really have no idea uh, if it's going to make a difference at all, uh, but why not give it a try? This seasoning from Spice Jungle, it's not real salty compared to, you know, the store-bought Montreal seasoning. Um, it's got all kinds of, you know, it's got some rye in it, it's got coriander, it's got uh, pepper. It's really, really good. I, I really have no idea what kind of difference it's going to make, if any. So these bags have been a pain every time I've done them. Um, they just, uh, they're just a pain and they're kind of pricey. So it's really annoying when I screw one up. You get three bags. And I'm gonna do my best to uh, just use one bag. So. First thing you want to do is uh, roll the bag backwards. And what we're going to do, so we turn it inside out here, and then we're going to try and, uh, we'll start with the thick end, and we're going to try to roll this thing on like a you know, it's like a giant condom, to be honest with you. Um, I'll see how it goes.
All right. Now the idea was uh, in rolling that bag backwards, the idea was to try to get as much, uh, try to keep this front area right here clean. And I did not do that very well. So I'm gonna wipe it out with a paper towel because this is the area that we need to seal. Now there's lots of uh, information on the internet about these bags. Basically the way they work is they, um, they allow air to escape from the bag without letting anything go in the bag. Uh, that's how they cause the, the bark to form on the outside of the meat, which combined with the temperature prevents it from spoiling. So if I can get this sealed, then this really is the ideal bag because um, you want it to be as tight and form-fitting as possible. And what I'm doing is trying to squish this meat down a little bit more into the bottom of the bag. I, I did the thick side down on purpose so that I had more area up here to, uh, to seal. So you just cut at the width of the... Um, where you're gonna stick it in here. You, know, you just stick it in and it's the width of the seal, you know, the area that goes into the vacuum to seal it. And as long as this thing is across this seal, you'll be fine. Take this membrane thing right here, hold it in there and slide this in here and hope to God that it Catches. I decided to leave all this footage in here to show you what a pain this is to get this very flimsy bag into this style of machine. During the uh, 35 days, I bought a different machine, which is way easier. You'll see that uh, at the end of the video. But um, once you shove, if you have this type of machine, once you get this thing in there just right, it'll actually work perfectly. So that is what you want to end up with. Nicely vacuum packed. You can see the seasoning in there, but you want this as much of this plastic touching the meat as possible. And as long as that's what you've got, uh, it will stick to the meat and form a bark uh, very quickly over the next couple days. Okay, day one. And there we go. That is what day one looks like. Shrink wrapped, seasoned, on a rack. And this is where it will live for the next 35 days. We are at 31 days, only four days left. I just, I can't wait. Uh, this is what it looks like up close. You can see the seasoning is uh, embedded into the bark and I have no idea if that's gonna matter or not. I mean, we'll see. The bag is completely separated except for a few spots and that's normal. You know, at this point, uh, the bag only really serves to accelerate that bark and that has occurred so the bag uh, tends to release. I flipped this at least uh, three times and it's very dense. It feels it feels heavier even though it isn't you know it's just dense. It's like a giant piece of beef jerky. It doesn't uh, bend or flex um, and that is uh, exactly how it should. When you open this up uh, and start cutting it you'll get kind of a beefy aroma uh, right now, there's no smell at all, zero. And that's exactly what you want. I'd say if there was a smell at this point, something would be rotting and that would be bad. Uh, so four more days, I really can't wait. This one is going to be amazing. I think I'll get a beer while I'm in here. All right, the day has finally arrived. This beauty is ready to cut up. It's um been 35 days and 
I'll just show you the process that I take. Um, you know, there's something that you can do uh, with the bark. I don't know what it is, so uh, I don't bother. Um, but one of these days I will research what you can do with the bark. The main event here. So uh, simply cut the bag off. put a little bit more light in here and the aroma is unbelievable unbelievable it is this beefy mm, so wonderful aside from eating it I think one of my favorite parts is the aroma so this is what you should expect it's uh, very hard like a big piece of beef jerky it's very dense uh, it's got you know, a little bit of sponge to it, a little bit of, uh, you can depress it a little bit. You can, I can tell that these pieces in here are going to be very deep reddish purple. And you've got uneven sides here. So what I like to do is just cut it right down the middle. And then I can stake it out from either side. And whatever I end up with, oh my God, it's like a waxy deliciousness. I mean, look at that. Uh, it's just, God, it's so exciting. So I've done this a couple different ways where I've, you know, shaved down the outside here and then cut them up. Um, I've also staked them and then trimmed them individually. For these, I'm going to cut them pretty outrageously thick. Um, and what I was started to say was I, I cut them right down the middle and then work my way out to the end because whatever I end up with here, I'll just use different chunks, you know, um, try not to waste any of the, of the good meat. But because I'm going to stake these about three to four inches thick each, I'm going to uh, trim them after I stake them. Uh, and then the only other thing that's different about this is the seasoning. Some of the seasoning is flaking off. Some of it is embedded in the bark, uh, but it's just oh, so great. So uh, right about there, that will feed uh, probably three, uh, definitely two with some leftovers. And I am all about the leftovers. Mm -mm -mm. So you can really feel how dense it is. And this knife is pretty sharp. I just sharpened it. Uh, but it's definitely much more dense than it would be. Yeah, so I didn't really cut that perfectly even. But anyway, so now that I've got this chunk, I'm gonna, going to go ahead and trim off the bark. I'm going to try to keep a little bit of that fat on there. I don't really need a lot of it. So I'm just going to check for any darkness. Now I can leave this. See how this little bit of dark right here, uh, a little bit right here and here. I have left that before and it's fine. It cooks up fine, but just to clean it up, make it perfect. I'm, I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that. I like to leave some of this fat. Don't really need a lot of it.
All right. So this is actually kind of an overkill. Uh, this one's a little bit too thick. I'm going to freeze it anyway, just like this. And I'll use it to, um, you know, when I have a few more people over, but this would probably feed probably three. And what I, what I'll do with this, I'll show you at the end of the video, I'll, uh, I'll sear this on both sides. I'll put my meter thermometer down in there and I will uh, sear actually all the sides and then I'll set it up in a uh, indirect heating area, heated area to finish it off. Man, this is just gonna be delicious. So one down, a little bit too thick. And uh, this is the waste that you end up with off just this one piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and stake the rest of this down, try to be a little bit more accurate with how thick I want them. Um, you know, I'll just kind of fast forward through this for you and then stay tuned because we're gonna cook one of these tonight and uh, it's gonna be incredible. The aroma is just, look, let me give you a close up. I mean, this is one, this is special. Mm -mm. God, it smells good. All right, here we go with, my Weston Pro 3500, uh, made in Voyage here actually. I really have only tested it. Um, but uh, here we go with the most ridiculous vacuum sealer I could find. All right, let's go ahead and seal. Uh, seal. Manual seal. Power. Love this thing. Perfect. Let me show you what we ended up with over here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six meals, uh, six and a half meals for two to three people each. It's a pretty good uh, return on that 20 pound ribeye. And uh, they are just absolutely gorgeous. All right, one steak I am going to season. The other I am not going to season at all because I want to see if the uh, aging process with seasoning made any difference at all. So all I'm using is uh, olive oil and uh, we'll go ahead and put a little on both sides. Both these steaks are pretty much room temperature. Uh, of course, they're so thick that we got all four sides going. And then I use a uh, seasoning blend Montreal seasoning from uh, from a company called Spice Jungle, uh, which is a dot com company. Meter thermometers over here, uh, and go ahead and insert. I'm going to insert in the thicker side, and all the way in. Two. There we go, number one. And uh, number two, because they are such different sizes, I'm gonna rinse off my hand here before I touch it, uh, but they're such different sizes that um, they're going to be done at different times. All right, got my grill at about 550, and uh, what I'm going to do is just scrub off this one side and turn the burners off. Uh, on the far side here because what I'll do is sear the uh, sear the steaks and then I'm going to set them over here 
uh, and let them bake, but I don't want any heat or I don't really need any heat there. This side is plenty hot to go ahead and sear them. I'll turn this middle one on uh, just because. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen me uh, sear them last. Well, I don't know. I think the jury's out uh, on whether or not what's best, searing before or after. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and sear them before in this case. And then uh, what I'll do is place them in, in this pan and let them sit over here. I'll likely shut this burner off also. I can actually shut that one off now. I don't really need it to sear them. Uh, I'll set the steaks right in here and let them uh, finish cooking. That way I know that they're not uh, getting any uh, more, you know, seared <laughs> because I set them on these hot grates. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the sear on this one, and that's a little bit more on the back side. Okay, so looks perfect. I'm going to uh, make sure that the uh, thermometer is not touching the edges at all. And now I can just let them sit right here in this pan uh, and bake them at about probably uh, 350, 400. I've got um, only these three burners on. Uh, only these three burners on. These three are off. Uh, depending on once I hit about 400, I'll go ahead and uh, turn them down, but I'll cook that indirectly uh, for about 20 minutes and I'll refer to the meter app to uh, make sure that I don't overcook them. So here's what you get with the meter app. Uh, it'll give you your estimating cook time on both thermometers one and two. And uh, I'll just have to keep referring back to the app to make sure that my internal temperature doesn't get uh, up to 120, 122 degrees. 125 is uh, probably perfect medium rare or rare, but um, more rare than medium rare. Uh, but the amount of cooking that occurs after you remove the meat from the grill is really shocking. Uh, so they'll probably come off at about 115 degrees, and then um, I'll continue to, uh, you know, just let them sit there. Uh, so here you can see it's wanting me to remove it. Um, I've hit that 115, 116 degrees, and uh, this is the smaller one. Uh, the bigger one, as you can see, has six more minutes. All right, so just got the alert. I'm at 450-ish. Uh, and uh, number one here, which is the smaller one, is ready to come off. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Looks, looks pretty good. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that one off the heat, put foil over it, and then this one here, of course, is larger. I think I'll go ahead and flip it, and uh, that one has a ways to go. Let's go ahead and uh, slice the one with. Ooh, hot. With no seasoning, see how that turned out. Perfectly, uh, perfectly cooked. Mm. All right, so it's very beefy. I would say it tastes like um, like a roast beef. It's very good. I do taste some salt. There's definitely some salt in there, and um, you get a little bit of this. You just 
get a little bit of this fat here. See what that tastes like. There's definitely some salt. Um, yeah, the seasoning definitely does make a difference. So what'll be interesting is, is the other one going to be over seasoned? This is very tasty, but if you needed some, uh, if you needed some seasoning on your steak, you'd likely add it. I bet this is going to be a good piece right here. Look at that. All right, so this is number two. Pull the thermometer out. Cut in. See how this one's cooked. And again, perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, now let's see what kind of flavor we have on this one. So this is the one that is uh, seasoned along with the aging seasoning. Nice, nice marbling in there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's very good. Not too much seasoning. I'll have to go back and try the other one now. Yeah, I'd say this has kind of a roast beef flavor. This definitely has a steak flavor to it, a seasoned steak flavor. So the combination of dry aging with seasoning and then lightly seasoning the steak, this could have been seasoned even lighter, is, uh, is the way to go. So I'll absolutely do that again. Mm. Can't stop eating it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.